Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 172. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Dick DeYoung has dug up DOS games backslash arcade2 backslash mx7 underscore 10. Not quite sure what to expect with this one. Um, let's see, got an mx7 dock, which is very small, and an mx7 executable. Um, let's try typing out that dock there. Type mx7 dot dock. Um, well, it says it's free shareware by Jean Guy Laval. Um, freeware and shareware are kind of two different things, but whatever. Um, displays VGA 640 by 350? What, really? That's kind of weird. Like, you'd be, you'd use EGA 640 by 350, but VGA 640 by 350? So it says 286 or better, speaker, ad lib, card sported. Um, well, I guess there's not really much to go on here, so let's start it up. MX7. Guy Laval, version 1.0. Mission is to collect. <laughs> okay, we've already got spelling mistakes. Your mission is to collect keys, money, magics, powers. Press the key F1 to see your info. There are lots of pushing walls. Don't touch the robot, you will lose power. Can't you find the last secret room? Okay, it's clear this person's first language was not English. In fact, it's probably French, just judging by the name, but. And apparently it has ad-lib card support, but you need to use sound.com. Um, can I just switch it now? I don't know. Also, I have no idea what's going on. Whoop. Okay, I'm definitely not in ad-lib mode. Um, so F1 brings up our stats there. Um, we've got 100 power, 99 money, 0 blue diamond, 0 keys, and 5 magics. Um, apparently that's a save game key. Escape just ends the game. Kind of expected that. Although it instantly quits. And apparently the full version is $13. Oh, this person's in Canada. And Quebec from the looks of it. So, yeah, Engl they probably know at least some English, but French would be the primary language there. Okay, so yeah, there's not really much to go on here. I think all we're doing is just moving around. At least those shot. Whoa. Okay, so I just noticed that you actually, um. What? Apparently, I have to find magics. I have no idea what this switch is doing. Uh, did I just take a hit? I think I did. Oh, I also ran out of magic, and now I'm dead. Oh, and it also insta-quits when you die, too, so... Okay, let's give this one more shot here. So, I'm not entirely certain what I'm supposed to be doing here. Like, there's not a help file to go on, really. Okay, so apparently it costs magic to go through those um, brown doors. And you take a lot of damage from that thing if you're just staying in its, the same spot it's in. Ow. Okay, we got our magics. And hit a thing and died and went out of the game. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, MX7 here is not controlling very well, because you can't, when you push a direction key, you move in that direction until you hit something. And on top of that, the game immediately quits once you get a game over. And those are all solid walls, so I can't even go up there.
Like, I kind of get what we're going for here, but at the same time, it's like surprisingly difficult to, to get anything done. Like, these don't push. I don't know what these rainbow blocks are for. Or these. Like, what are these? Oh, these are pushable blocks. And now I can't go back through here? What? Why was I able to pass through the barrier once and now I can't go back through it? Is there like some kind of secret wall I have to go through to get that key? Yeah, I can't go back through here now. Why is the... Okay, so this is MX7. It's... It's a game. I, I get the impression that this is inspired by like Chips Challenge and games like that, which have like tile based movement and everything. But it's a little tricky to control because there is a little delay in when it's detecting your movement, which doesn't help when it's moving automatically for you. You take damage at a phenomenal rate from the enemies that are out there. And then on top of that, it's just this is the first level and I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do, especially given the fact that I hit a red switch to pass through this barrier here, and now I can't go back through it. <laughs> like, I, is that a bug? Is that, like, intentional? Like, was there a time limit? I, I don't know. <laughs> and then what about this key here? This first, and th there's no instructions. The instructions told you, tell you what everything does in terms of the keys you can press, and that's it. So I am at a complete loss as to how to do anything. So yeah, this is definitely a game. Like there's definitely some um some interesting graphics and stuff here. I this is EGA graphics. This is not VGA graphics. So let's just clarify that. But I think this game needed a bit more work cuz in its current state it's kind of confusing. Next up, RetroSwim has dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash blockade. Some kind of blockade game? Like, I mean, it's in the title. Um, a CNF file of some sort from the 90s, but the other two files seem to be from 86. A com file and a doc file. Um, kind of sizable for the doc file, so let's go edit blockade.doc. Introduction. Blockade is a real-time territory control action game for one to two human players. Up to five additional computer players may participate. It seems a little ambitious for a game of a f that was made in 86 for PCs, but we'll see how this plays. The game is played in a 40 by 25 cell playing field, i.e. the exact same size as text mode in the, in the wide format. So I see what they're doing there. The object of the game for each round is to avoid running into another player's path, a player's own path, or off the field. When one of these three things happen, the player is eliminated from the round. Wait, this is just Tron Light Cycles, isn't it? Yeah, there's a thing here that says Disappearing Trail. This is definitely Tron Light Cycles. <laughs> Although I'm not seeing any information here in terms of like copyright or anything, so I have no idea who made this. But... Yeah, this is Tron Light Cycles. Although apparently it's been read, it was created by uh, Don Lobs. Apparently wants eight dollars as a suggested con suggested contribution for registering. Okay, well at least the menus work out pretty well here. So there are in-game instructions, which is nice. So you don't need the t the text file. Although this is pretty much reading out what was in the text file. So we can set the total number of players. Six seems a lot, so I'm just going to do four. Um, we'll keep it on slow speed for now. Um, pursuit. Computer players pursue leader. Disappearing trail for eliminated players. And noise off. Well, we want the noise on, because we want to we want to hear just how bad this game gets. Although so far the sound effects aren't too obnoxious, but eh, you never know. Anyways, game. Human number one's name. 
Pressing a direction key is only required to change the direction. Now I have to hold the key down, of course. Oh, we actually went into graphics mode. Okay, and we're up against Guardian, HAL 9000, and Colossus. And CGA graphics. Okay, so yeah, it's basically... Well, that guy's screwed. Okay, so if two characters run right into each other, then the game immediately... Then it, like, ends for both players. So yeah, HAL 9000 won that one because I kind of ran right into the Colossus there. Um, I'm going to guess if I say no, it might quit the DOS. Yeah, it does. Okay, I actually want to turn the speed up because that was a little slow. Let's do speed four. Okay, same characters as before. Probably could have gone even a little faster than that, but... Um, this isn't good. Well, I'm pretty much screwed. <laughs> and then it plays out the remaining players. And there you go. So that time I am only got three points. There's an unforced error, so I wonder what that's about. So next round. Let's see if we can do a bit better this time. Okay, so definitely what I want to do now is make sure that that guy up there can't, um... Okay, so he's basically going to spend the rest of the rest of the game filling in his space there. I think he's got more space to work with than I do, though. So he's probably going to win. Uh, it's close. Yay, he actually bit the dust before I did. So I actually won one. Yay. Although now I'm tied with Colossus, so now we got to run the tiebreaker, of course. Whoops. Kind of messed that one up. Oh, well. Looks like I get last place. I do like that the game speeds up when it's only computer players left in order to get it over with. Okay, I see what it means. Unforced error is when the player makes a mistake that costs him his life where he didn't actually need to. In other words, the player actually had ways to not die. So yeah, that was Blockade. That was just a... Huh? Basic Tron Light Cycles game. And our last dig for today comes from Ben Gemmett, DOS Games backslash arcade backslash Galaxy 1. We're going to be flying across the galaxy and doing stuff in 45 files, so i got to do it this way. Um, actually, we got a lot of files here. Like, in terms of just what we can do here, like, there's text files, doc files, batch files... More text files, more patch files, multiple executables. What do we even do? Um, also, it looks like there might be voice. Huh. Okay, well, let's just quickly type out the file id.diz, see what we're dealing with here. Um, Galaxy Trek 1.0, invading forces from foreign galaxies, the personal logs of Dr. Vladimir Ravinsky, and unexplored quadrants in outer space lead intrigue and excitement to Galaxy Trek. 640x480 graphics, polyphonic sound, roll and sound blaster support, an excellent game. I will be the judge of that. And apparently $30 to register. Whoa. Okay, that's a lot, so this better actually be, like, surprisingly decent. Oh, well, let's go into Microsoft Editor here and see what some of these files actually tell us. So, this is just saying no major release notes, enjoy the game, please share the game with your friends. Okay, um, what about the galaxy.txt? Galaxy Conquest, version 2.3, by Alf... Wait a minute. Okay, so 
we're actually dealing with two games that have been shoved into the same folder. <laughs> I am not even kidding. So there's a text file here for a Galaxy Conquest by an Al Funk made in 1988. But then we've also got files here pertaining to a Galaxy Trek 1.0 made by, what was it, TAC Enterprises. And then there's also these doc files here. And like this one here is for Galaxy Trek. And I think all of these might actually be for Galaxy Trek. Yeah. So most of the files here are for Galaxy Trek, but there's also something here called Galaxy Conquest. So it's like, which files belong to which is like the, the big question here. Um, what are our executables? Oh, actually, what are our batch files? Manual, order, and readme, and those are all dated 93. Whereas we look at the executables, galaxy.exe is dated 88. So that's the Galaxy Conquest game. And then the two that are dated 93 are probably for Galaxy Trek. Let's actually check out Galaxy Conquest first. The older one. See what we got here. Our Galactic Conquest. This game is not to be sold or modified. Okay. Press enter for an introductory screen. We got a Stargate, a Flux Hole, and then a Comet. Um, we get cruisers, destroyers, battle stars, minesweepers, and energy ships. Type any key to choose scenario. Uh, one. Ooh. Or now we're choosing our scenario. Um, there's setup options. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of options we can choose here. Uh, let's just go back to the main selection menu. Let's just generate randomly, see where we end up. Okay. So, this looks like it's basically like some kind of strategy game. Probably inspired by those old, um, oh, what was it called? There was like, there was a tabletop Trek game, like Star Trek game, that did like the whole hexagonal grid with little, with little pieces to represent the different ships and you had your damage counters and everything. Oh, I can't remember the name of it right now. I actually have some stuff for it. Never, never properly played it, but. Um, so I get to use the numeric keypad to move. Okay, so certain characters, certain pieces are being moved at certain times by certain amounts. So, like, I mean, are we actually going to, like, attack everybody at some point, or? Oh, so it's a firing turn. Okay, so our Minesweeper dropped a mine, and their Minesweeper dropped a mine. I'm playing both players, I should point out, so it would, doesn't look like the game has, um, doesn't look like the game has AI control, or maybe it did and I just missed it in the menu, but that's kind of weird that it keeps switching between text mode and CGA mode for various, um, purposes. Yeah, it's basically giving, like, an overview of everything at the end of a turn, and then you can either continue or save in the current state. That's kind of weird, the way it's doing it, but I do get it at the same time, like, what the process is. This is definitely a game that's not lending itself well to um, to explaining itself, so you would defi definitely need, like... There, there was that document file, or the text file there, that had all that information about everything in here, so you could play this game after reading all of that and know what you were doing. But if there's not, like, I'm going to quickly check to see, or can I even quit this right now? Nope. I got to go through everything. Okay, here we go. So quit. Are you sure? Yes. So I'll just go quickly go back into it just to see what the um, options were. So setup options. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's AI control for the game, so you would have to play it against another person. So yeah, it's definitely got, um, it definitely has some potentials here. Okay, good. It runtime error, so I can quit out. 
it, it's definitely got some potential to it, but it's not something you would could just pick up and play. You would actually have to look, look through the documentation to learn how to play it, and you'd have to rope a friend into trying it with you. Okay, so now let's try the Galaxy Trek thing. i to make sure to turn the cycles back up for this one. Um, we'll run the setup first. So, change game speed. Um, definitely set it on fast. I get It says game speed, but it's saying that the slower speeds are for, like, slower computers? What? That doesn't make any sense. It's actually more like a detail option, because it's t saying at the bottom how it's adjusting, like, the detail settings. So yeah, we'll set it on fast. We'll set our soundboard to uh, Sound Blaster compatible. Um, yeah, so let's see what we got here. Galaxy TK. This is uncommon. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, this has a copyright of, yeah, 1993 down there. This looks a little more substantial than your typical shovelware. Because it probably isn't, and somehow ended up in here anyways. It is a time of war. Alarming numbers of unknown forces threaten our existence. Our defense is you, Commander, and the X-108 Galaxy-class starship. Dr. Vladimir Ravinsky designed the X-108 to be completely void of life forms. All controls are processed via high-speed communications by remote bases located at the edge of our galaxy. Dr. Ravinsky has been missing ever since we declared war. Good luck, Commander. <laughs> okay then. So, I find it interesting it's running at 640 by 480. Welcome to High Command, Frontier Division. Please register. I find it interesting it's running at 640 by 480 with the Sound Blaster sound. That is not a combination you see often. So I guess we'll create a new character here. Um, we've completed no missions, Thank but... You. Okay. Um, the readme right here, which is just basically ordering info, uh, begin tour. So, mission one. Welcome aboard, Commander. Your X-108 is fully armed, ready for action. Since this is your first mission, we want you to get the feel for the X-108 to experience what it is like to control such a powerful ship, and to begin to develop your own strategies. So the main objective is to make, be to make all quadrants of the nearest science sector visible on the sector map. Okay, so basically we just need to uh, map the whole sector? Okay. So how hard is this going to be? Um... Well, I already have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, <laughs> so... Well, apparently we have ten remaining probes. Now, if we send a probe here... Oh! Um, can we move? Okay, so this is actually like a pointed click in terms of movement. And then right mouse button fires our weapon towards where we're aiming. So then what are these, um... Oh, we do not want to hit those. Can we shoot them? Can shoot them. Yeah, I'm not entirely certain what we're doing here. Um, are these power-ups or planets? Whoops. Um, I craft entering quadrant. probably shouldn't have hit that. Not moving very well anymore. Okay, I'm back up to full power. Oh, I can actually hold the mouse button down. Okay, that makes things considerably easier. <laughs> so, yeah, this is basically a uh, very uh, different. Like, 
I'm... <laughs> I literally am very surprised at this. This is not a game I have ever seen or heard of. And yet it plays almost like a modern game, even though it kind of doesn't. I really don't know what to make of this. This has me, like, surprised. Oh, it turns out I'm actually using my torpedoes, not my phasers. I mean, apparently I have lots of torpedoes. How do I use my phasers, then? Um... Oh, that's a pause key. But no, really, how do I use my fa phasers? Also, why do shots just seem to come right out of nowhere? It's almost like some of the enemies are cloaked or something. Actually, I think that's exactly what it is. I think some of the enemies are cloaked. <laughs> oh, here's the help screen. Okay. Um, so yeah, move is left mouse button. Can hold left mouse button to move faster. Um, control plus left mouse button is tractor beam. Right mouse button's torpedoes. Um, phasers is control with the right mouse button. Okay. So... There's our phasers. Okay. This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> is it worth $30? Uh, I don't know yet. But this is just the first mission. I imagine the later missions are probably very similar. But how do we actually move to a different quadrant? Can we, like... No? What's the key to move to a different quadrant? Um, return to sector map is F12. So... Oh, there's still enemies present, so we can't, um... Can we leave now? Nope. Okay, it seems like the cloaked enemies... Okay, all enemies are gone. So now can I leave? Yes, I can. Okay. So... Now it says I have remaining probes. How do I actually launch those? It says launch pods is alt right mouse button. Like, can I do that? Oh, I sure can. And it like goes clear across the map as well. So there's no enemies here. There's lots of enemies here. So let's go here. And we got music again. The cloaked enemies don't like to attack unless there's other enemies present. So let's see if we can goad some shots out of the cloaked craft. There he is. And we got him. Okay. So now that we actually know what we're doing, that's actually not so bad now. So one thing I will say about this game so far is that I think it would have worked better if the sprites were twice as big. Because it kind of feels, like, very empty, like you're constantly trying to find stuff. I keep the same movement speed, but make everything twice as big, and I think that would have worked out better for this game. Mission accomplished. Return to high command. Um, well, there we go. So, how do I actually return to high command? <laughs> That's kind of important, right? Control H, return to base. Okie dokie. So, yay, we actually won the first mission. <laughs> okay, so this next mission here is actually telling us that we need to recover some data packs. So there's definitely more to this than just blasting everything. And it even says here that there have been reports of unfamiliar spacecraft, which means you probably have more kinds of enemies showing up. So this is actually pretty cool. Definitely need to find out more about this game because this might actually be viable for an Ancient DOS Games episode someday. But yeah, so if anybody knows any extra info about this game, let me know. And yeah, I, <laughs> this is actually a decent game. <laughs>